I'm going to say, let me just caveat all of this by saying that as much as I hate Seraphine, boy, I've been spamming her in solo queue. I'll tell you what. <laughs> now, here's your hosts, The League Dead, Kevin, Mitchell, and Alistair. What's up, gamers, and welcome to another episode of the All In Podcast. I am The League Dad, and as always, I'm joined by the Goon Squad. I think that's the name I'm going to give give ourselves, the Goon Squad. We got Kevin, Mitchell, and Alistair, and uh, you know what? I got to say, this is probably the first time we started recording, and it's like daylight where I'm at right now. I'm actually energized because I'm an old man, and usually when we record, it's late, and I'm tired, but not today. No, sir. I am feeling good. Uh, and you know, to this past weekend, it was kind of boring, not much action really going on in the league. Uh, but yeah, no, actually, no, I'm just kidding, obviously, because it was crazy this past weekend. I think we're all super hyped to get into this episode because I think there's so many things we want to talk about. But uh, before we do all that, how how is everything going? Kevin, let me start with you. How, how are you doing, my friend? I'm doing well. I accepted a new job offer. So um, <laughs> Thursday nice. accepted a job in LA. It's another game company. They're called Phoenix Labs. They help make a game called Dauntless. Um, so other than that, I'm going to do mobile marketing and PC and console with them. And I start in a couple of weeks. So nice. Uh, are you transitioning out of your current job right now? Yeah, yeah I'm so in gotta... the midst of that right now. So lots of like writing documents and stuff like that and saying goodbyes. So nice. It's a little bittersweet, but it's a pretty long transition. So I hope nice. a lot of time. Congratulations, man. I know uh, you'd mentioned that last last podcast. So glad to hear that you got the job. And uh, did are you going to be working remote or are you going to be moving? Uh, I'll be remote for a bit. And then when they build this office or at least decide where oh, it's right, going to be, right. but I'll move to L.A. But with no office, it's really hard for me to commit to somewhere in LA where I could, LA is huge. I could like totally miss where yeah. the office is and just waste my time, right? I don't want That's to move true. twice in LA. Okay, cool, man. Well, glad to hear everything's going well. Alistair, how are you doing, man? Uh, any any crazy building meetings this week? <laughs> no, thankfully. <laughs> Thank goodness. Um, but yeah, it's not, nothing's up really. It's just kind of been school starting still and about it watching the games getting situated cool man well glad that transition's going well mitchell how are you my friend i'm doing all right uh, it was a fun weekend i decided to make my plans on saturday and be like all right i'm gonna watch egc9 do stuff on the weekend on saturday i chose the wrong day i chose the wrong <laughs> yeah day completely on <laughs> these tl was way better mm. um but otherwise it was fun i mean i went to the zoo i saw some penguins that was cool but uh yeah mm, that's about yeah. it I thought nice, that was going to be an NA joke. I know, right? Oh, yeah. <laughs> no, that's cool. Yeah. Well, I mean, there's a plethora of stuff we got to talk about. I think just right off the bat, number one, I have to apologize to 7th and 8th place TSM and Golden oh, yeah. Guardians because last episode I was pretty much saying, like, what's the point? And I think they showed us what the point is, is that, you know, we got the upset with TSM. Uh, to your credit, Mitchell, you kind of were thinking there might be an upset there uh, with Team Liquid and FlyQuest. Um, and the, and even honestly, Golden Guardians and CLG did not expect Golden Guardians to do that well. I mean, Stick say popping off, man, on the on the Zeri. Uh, so they're like, it's just crazy that even in those lower bracket, quote unquote, games were just as exciting. I mean, we had almost all of our series be, you know, go to game fives. So a lot of really exciting stuff. Uh, but yeah, I mean. I got to apologize because they really they really did me wrong. Like, I really was fooled. But that kind of begs the question, like, is it fair that these lower-ranked teams got a week off? Because, you know what I mean? Like, because Fly, yeah. FlyQuest and CLG had a play the week before. Doesn't that kind of give an advantage to these lower-bracket teams? And what do you guys think about that? It's always a wash, man. Like, there are just teams who are like, I played six lower-bracket games. I'm coming in hot. And then there's another lower bracket team or upper bracket teams. Like I played one game, I'm cold as crap, I just lose. But then there's teams like I hit strats, right? So honestly, I think it just kind of evens out in the end. There, you can never tell, right? Because you can't decide which team is heading to the lower bracket and not, mm -hmm. and like their personalities and how their attitude is for it. I think it was fine this way. I do apologize to seventh and eighth and everything, but that doesn't like this time. I apologize. This is not re rewrite every time where the bottom bracket is just a, a complete wash. Mm -hmm. complete crap show and it's just like a 3-0 or 3-1 stop right like i'm really happy these were good games this time but that has nothing to do with the format like that can just happen because the teams were playing up to a higher level yeah gotcha i mean if you want to be honest i'm not sorry like 
TSM just won 33% of the games they won in the regular season on <laughs> Thursday. Yeah. Like, real, Like I'm not sorry. Like, they played bad for the regular season. People should be doubting them. They played well, good for them, but they, they proved people wrong. But, yeah. again, they, they increased their wins by 33% on Thursday. Like, mm. no one's going to expect you to win going into playoffs with six wins throughout, out, out yeah. of 18. Yeah, that is true. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's uh, it's pretty wild. I think that what happened was like not to be expected at all. I mean, I'd still be interested in like that play-in idea of you just maybe get in like a quick best of three or something. Like, don't wait too b- super long for the lower bracket. Uh, but it worked out this time, and if it keeps working out in the future years, then I think I'll be down with it. You know, I'll be down if it, every year it's just like seven and eighth actually puts up a fight and it's good stuff. I'm like, all right, sure, why not? Yeah. But um, yeah, I mean. This is uh this is just League of Legends, man. FlyQuest, what was up with that? They just uh they really had that series and then they 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 didn't. They just threw it out the yeah. window. Um another case of super weird game ones also. That was a weird game one from FlyQuest and TSM. Absolutely. Um, yeah. Okay. Well, I mean, you know, that's the thing is like man, I keep going back to our first episode where it was like doesn't really matter what happens in regular season because playoffs is where it's at. I feel like these these playoffs, like, man, I, I am fiending for, I wish there was more best ofs, like, you know, best of yeah. threes at least or something like that because it is crazy. Nothing matters in the regular season. FlyQuest got, what, sixth place? Uh, you know, CLG got fourth place. I mean, look at them now. They're like, you know, scraping to, you know, CLG at least is scraping to see if they can still, you know, have a chance. And Fly and FlyQuest is out, right? So it didn't matter their record. Uh, you know, TSM, yeah, they were really crappy. And so was Golden Guardians crappy in the regular season. But look, TSM now has a chance. Like, I mean, it's yep. very little chance, but... They have a chance, you know, and uh, honestly, I think that's why I, I wish for more best of series. I mean, the playoffs have been hype. I mean, another example is is Cloud9. Again, very, I was really doubting them. I think we spent like a total of one minute last week just predicting <laughs> that EG C9 because they're like, yeah, it's EG all the way, right? And look what happened. Yeah. Like, things can change so fast. Uh, and I just want to point out that with C9 winning, we either have TL the the most hyped roster right possibly not going to make it to worlds or eg who won last split and went to msi not make it to worlds like that's crazy to me um and c9 really threw a wrench into everyone's plans honestly alistair you were right because you were like i think this roster will get first you were just a little delayed that's all it was they didn't get first until you know by regular season but they're looking like a first place team right now uh let's start right there because i think that's got to be probably the biggest upset with implications you know with c9 making it to worlds like what were your thoughts of them and that series because i know there's a lot of stuff to talk about they're both good and both bad like on eg but really c9 pulling it through clutch man yeah uh on paper we always knew danny wasn't the best laner right uh we also knew that berserker is probably one of the best laners uh at least individually maybe not his lane but him himself right uh, so the, the fact that this happened is very impressive. The way they won was like kind of what you want from them. But I would have to say like EG just like did not play that game. Like they didn't play that series. Like w- impact. There was no playoff impact. He didn't. No, just, there just, wasn't. He just yeah, showed up like the way he season. showed up in regular season. Yeah. Actually, it was like yeah. when we finally were like, yeah, give him credit, and we're like, yeah, you know, believe in playoff impact. He shows up, and we're like, damn it, really, man. Uh. I think that EG just Danny's like Ezreal play was atrocious. It was like committing war crimes against AD carries Ooh. there Some every time. Like even the early death, <laughs> the, the middle deaths, like his E fords were just not it. Um, and I think Vulcan also had a quiet series, even though it wasn't as obviously terrible. Like I think mm-hmm. there was just some micro plays on Yumi that weren't there either. I will say once again, Seraphine just cannot lose. Seraphine, oh Senna, I have not seen lose once. Every time I see a pick, I'm just thinking to myself, like, is is there a reason we let this through, or is there a reason we don't pick this whenever it's allowed through? Like game one, Seraphine was up. Is there a comp yeah. Seraphine loses to? I actually haven't seen it yet. You know, it's no, like I, I have a lot of thoughts about Seraphine. We we can okay, go. Okay, then I'll let it, I'll let you later. emphasize on it because yeah. for me, it's just like I'm I'm small brain, right? I see Seraphine, yeah. like I guess we win, and the, yeah. uh, I'll talk about it later for the Liquid series. But that's what I got, man. EG didn't show up. I think C9 showed up well. And they played to Berserker. They actually didn't 
all play super well, but Fudge and Berserker specifically, I thought were like on a high level. And then Blabber was also playing like Blabber. So maybe not like top tier Blabber level, but good enough Blabber level. Way better than regular. Um, Where was JoJo? Honestly. Um, yeah. yeah. I don't know. I mean, I, I will say about Danny Zezreal, I mean, he, he's playing against the person who knows those plays better than anyone. So <laughs> it's pretty it's pretty easy for Sven to know when uh, Danny's going to screw something up. But me- memes aside, <laughs> like, jo- JoJo just, I don't know, he he just looked really bad, man. I, I don't know, he just like wasn't there. And it's hard to say it's nerves because, I mean, he was... He won finals. He went to MSI. Like mm-hmm. I know he's a rookie, but still, like it, it feels like it, it. He doesn't feel like a rookie, right? Like he's first All Pro mid. Like very clearly the best mid. He's been to MSI already after his first split. He won his first split in LCS, and then he just kind of like got blasted. I mean, at the yeah. same time, to be fair, I think the Cloud Nine that played was the best Cloud Nine that we've seen all split. Um, yeah. In fact, probably all year, if you want to be honest. But I don't know. It just felt like joke. A lot of it was just because Jensen was allowed to play much better than because his lane opponent wasn't there. That's true. Yeah, that's all. That's all. It was all. It was a pretty rough series for pretty much all of EG. JoJo really terrible series. I think Inspired had a lot of misses. Impact non-existent. Danny flashing into walls, e- eating forward, <laughs> kind of just not missing everything on Seraphine like. It was a rough series for everybody. Vulcan was pretty invisible, but he played two games of Yumi, so like whatever. Um, I have a theory. So watching the post game interview for Inspired, he really gave the impression that basically um, they didn't draft at all how he wanted, and they didn't play at all how he wanted. So he kind of subtly flamed his team, but it yeah. felt <laughs> like constructive. But also he was salty after that loss, right? Uh, so um, his main complaints were. Um, early rotationing Sejuani on red side and choosing red side, like prioritizing red side as well, and uh, not banning Zillion in the fourth phase because he knew it was going to come, and it did come in game four. Uh, he wanted to ban it every game, so just he didn't pick it. Hard to say, really, but um, uh, I, I do have a theory, though, that it did feel like... So, Doublelift has said in Champions Q, and I've actually heard this from other pro players just randomly on like Twitter or through Reddit and stuff, that Inspire is the type of player that he pretty much dominates the comms. He tells everybody what to do. He's the main shot caller. He's the main voice in draft. He's the main leader in both the early game and late game calls. And to an extent, it feels like sometimes he micromanages players a little bit. And he's really successful. And I think for the most of the year, he was doing that. But it did feel like in this series, something changed so that a lot of players are making their own choices or not listening to Inspired. Like, there are times, especially in that first Riftheld fight versus EG versus C9, um, it felt like Impact was saying to go onto Fudge. He was playing uh, Orin into the Camille. Riftheld was already dead. It looked like Hecram was actually pathing yeah. out, and then Orin went in, CC'd the Camille, and Hecram has no ulti and is kind of running around and being like trying to push Camille back in. And that like completely snowballed the game out of control. You saw Inspired lose so much confidence after that. Um, I mean, that's just game one. I, I, I have a lot of thoughts, but I think I've been ranting for a bit. So I'll open them back up. No, that's <laughs> fine. I mean, I think, you know, especially particularly in that, that instance, that game, like that was atypical also because uh, even the casters noticed it. Like EG does not, like they sent Danny up. Typically they yeah. don't because they funnel gold to Danny. They, you know, work with what they have, maybe try to contest. But no matter what, they're trying to get gold into Danny's hands, especially because he's not that strong of a laner because that's how they play through. You know, that's how they play uh, their win condition is him. Um, and so that was uncharacteristic of them, which, again, going back to your comp situation, what's that? Why a, such a diversion from their plan? And then obviously yeah. after the Rift Herald is gone looks like it's just a completely sus you know engage like yeah. trying to look for a fight like why there was no reason to and so yeah, there's definitely i think something going on um you know going going on behind the scenes there um whatever it is because it hasn't just been this week you know that they've kind of been on this trend i mean i think mitchell maybe a couple weeks ago you were even on the fence of like eg just does not look good and part of that we allude to impact phoning it in or whatever, you know, this playoff impact time. But I think this series definitely showed that I think it's just not, you know, the impact thing. It's things that are that are much deeper behind the scenes. But I also want to take a positive spin on, like, the fact that C9 
people were doubting them, all of us included. Like, uh, yeah. you know, the as many bad things as as EG did. I mean, C9 barely won their their uh, series against uh, CLG. So they, they the, played so much better. Like, they just did in every way. Mechanically, they were yeah. insane this series. Something oh, yeah. we've been waiting to see all year long. Um, and just like their decisiveness and their plays. Like Blabber was just counter ganking every single inspired gank. He was so good. Like. It's just like, it's just a totally different team uh, that played against CLG, who's messing up mechanically, who's just kind of fighting randomly, right? Th this was just next level C9. Like, this was super legit from them. So, yeah. Yeah, I wonder too, like, you know, even in their drafts, the interesting thing is like, you know, counterpicking for Fudge. And he showed like, hey, I can do that. If Bwibo can do it, I can do it, right? And, you know, uh, they made that work. And, uh, you know, especially with the Camille and the Fiora, like those were just really good games. And I love their last, you know, flex pick with the Sejuani, you know, where was that going? And then you see the Zillion and then the Olaf at the end. And it's just like, oh my gosh, C9 drafting so well. Like it's so yeah. crazy. Um, I'm not sure about how I feel about the LeBlancs. I think they did fine. Uh you know, I think it did its job. I, I, I don't know if there were better picks possible, but I thought their drafts overall were, were really good. And then to just couple that with them playing well, C9 to me looks like a dangerous team, actually. Like, I know it's one series. I know it's like four, what, four games they played? Like, but I don't know, man. Now my <laughs> my hopes are high. Like, I hope we don't just watch them against 100 Thieves and just like go 0-3 or something like that, because then that would be so sad. Like, I, I hope they're actually good and something clicked yeah. with them. And that it's, you know, they're going to be a, so. well, cause look, I they're in, they're good. in worlds, man. We want them to do good. But why, why don't you think so, Mitch? I'd like to hear your Oh thoughts. no, I don't think they're just going to roll. Oh, okay. Okay. Teams. okay. I, uh -huh. I think that they're <laughs> okay. very, like if they play exactly like how they played in the series, like they would be a competitive team against any team in the world. Like true. The yeah. mechanics are very crisp, yeah. like super, super good. Like LeBlanc is honestly, I don't favor it, but the way Jensen plays it. Ooh, that's fine. You can play like that every game. I Totally think LeBlanc is fine in a lot of drafts. It's just we don't see that level of play. Uh, but he had, like, a homing missile on his chain. It was actually crazy. <laughs> yeah. Nuts. Uh, Kevin, uh, Alistair, do you all have anything on C9? Yeah. Uh, for C9's sake, like, I think Berserker has shown his class. Like, dude, I think SKT is probably, like, is there a return clause where we can trade Guma for him? <laughs> Ooh, like, yeah, I know. We would really like to have an AD carry of that caliber. He doesn't even have like native comms, right? Or like a native support. He doesn't have carry as a support. So like think about what this guy could be on like a T1. So I think that's huge. I, I still don't think Jensen's playing a peak form, but I mean, dude, he made it to Worlds again. So like yeah. once again, it's not C9 always makes it to Worlds. It's Jensen always makes it to Worlds. I think it's again. a record. So, yeah, yeah it is. He's, he just in the whole always does it. World. Yeah. yeah, eight eight times, I think, in a row, right? Yep. Yeah. Highest. Yeah. Is more than Faker, uh, at least in a row. <laughs> yeah, in a yeah. row. Yeah, no, I mean, I um, think it's it's really crazy uh, that he he's able to do that. As much you know, flame as he was getting a little earlier, it, good for Jensen, right? <laughs> My other quick take is: Does that mean CLG is better? Hmm. I don't know. <laughs> I, a bad, on a quick a note, I'm gonna say, like yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, <laughs> my quick response is no, but you know, I think <laughs> I think what it was is, is C9 just elevated their game to another level. I don't think I, CL, I that means that, anything so. like CLG yeah. was actually good, um, mm -hmm. especially after watching the Golden Guardians uh, match. But Alistair, anything on on your boys Ven? I mean, he wasn't on. He you know he's on support duty, so he can't Ian on his Ezreal. But uh, what, <laughs> what were your thoughts on that? Uh I don't, I don't have any like main points on Sven. I think I think he played well for the most part. I don't think mm -hmm. he did anything crazy. I don't think he did any anything egregious. I think he just played like but he played consistently well. I mean he played what, three games of Renata, I think. Uh, yeah, like, three yes. games of Renata. Yeah, he played three yeah. games like two, three, and four. All played Renata. Pretty good. Um but the main thing I wanted to say, um, I think Berserker going second item LDR in game two was really troll. I 100% <laughs> think he should have gone the uh, Bloodthirster. Mm -hmm. But yeah, we were talking about this. Yeah, Bloodthirster yeah. second on Aphelios. Oh, on Aphelios, yeah. yeah. What's what's your reasoning just for you know for listeners and for myself because I don't know. <laughs> yeah, so the reason I don't think so. LDR is pretty much a core item because base resistances are so high anyways. Yes. Uh huh. Um. That but. It's not worth building LDR if they don't like early game if they're not building armor and the only person building armor this game is a Sejuani. Mm -hmm. And since your team, well, you as a Felios lack sustain anyways because you don't have fleet. 
realistically, against Yumi Ezreal, you're going to get poked out. And you can't always guarantee you have I Red see. Gun. So you're building LDR, which is honestly just it's only for Sejuani, which you don't really want to be hitting. Gotcha. Uh, I mean, obviously you can't, you will if you have to, but it, it just like doesn't really make sense at this point. Um, as a third item, maybe, but I, especially like the giant slayer is honestly kind of overrated. Don't get me wrong, it's good, but like the actual numbers it puts up is not as high as people think it is. Mm, okay. All yeah, right. yeah, I could agree with it. I also think uh, Bloodthirster overall as an item is just really undervalued and underrated uh, in the meta. I think like just being a little bit tankier in a meta with enchanters, right? Like it just goes so far. It just goes so long, uh, especially if you're playing against explosive team comps, right? The extra shielding and everything. So I, I actually, yeah, I'm a big Bloodthirster fan. I think it's pretty, pretty strong right now. Um, I, I just want to talk a little bit just more about like the way eg was playing sort of thing because they're, they're they're pretty pitiful in like the reason why this series went this way right like mm -hmm. yes c9 played well but eg played so poorly so low below the level that we've seen and um i think expanding on my theory i want to like open up as a question but like what do you guys think like happened because i do think that mm -hmm. like the coaching staff or something must have been like inspired you have too much of an ego we know you're getting MVP. Calm down. We're gonna like not make you be the guy who says and talks about everything. Because from what I've heard from uh, multiple pros who play with him in champ skew and stuff, he's just completely dominating comms. I mean, I don't know if you guys ever play like that. I can kind of be like that. People can be like that. So, what are your overall thoughts on just like inspired being like that? Inspired also being an insane player, but having a bad series and just overall calm issues and theories, maybe. I mean, it's it's it hard because. Course. It's like if, first of all, is that even true, right? Like, I mean, maybe, maybe it, it is. Looks pretty true. It, if it, it if that's the, the case, yeah. yeah. I mean, like, if that's the case, then then let's let's I'm, I'll speak according to that assumption because if that's the case, sure, yeah. Then yeah. I I would say, <laughs> look, if they've been witted so far and the changes were happening when you're not giving him that kind of calm control. Then I think they need to go back because I think yeah. he is MVP for a reason, and they only lost three games, and it felt like the very last part of the split is when they started to fall off. I think from eighty percent of the split in the beginning, like they were just cruising, and so I think whatever comms or what if he's the one making the reads on you know drafts on on the patches and stuff like that, and and really kind of having a high uh, influence over the drafts, then I say keep it if it's winning. You know, like, why, unless it's affecting, like, the performance of the other teammates, like, if Danny, like, can't perform under that kind of working environment, then okay. Yeah. But if it's more of, like, hey, coaches want more control over the thing or something like that, then I, I would I be like, it if it is, then I, I'm like, then I, forget the I coaches. Yeah, yeah, I'm saying forget I, the coaches. I, I actually feel like it's a bit of the coaches being... Because, like, we also have a weird coach change, right? Usually it's Peter Dunn, mm -hmm. and then it was some other dude that I'd never seen talking about EG in, like, the, uh, the little interview stuff. So I'm like, what is going on back there? Wait, did <laughs> Peter happening? Dunn... He's still the coach, right? He got moved, actually. I mean, his official title is not coach, technically. He's what? still in the org, but it's, like, leader of, like, esports division or something weird. So it's, That's like, interesting. Different. Yeah. I mean, because the thing is, Peter Dunn on Twitter... I feel like that guy can, I don't want to say, I think he could rub people the wrong way sometimes. Like with, if it, if he talks like how his tweets are, right? Like I'm just making that assumption yeah. that I yeah. could see that because some of his tweets, even though maybe he's correct or something like, it just seems like the way he's saying it has a, like a condescending air, at least from, for me. And maybe that, you know, I could see if inspired is kind of like that too. Uh, and Peter Dunner like that, uh, you know, maybe that's the clash, but I, that's why I was asking, is Peter Dunn still the coach? And maybe they haven't publicly said anything, but if his title is not even that, then that's that's pretty interesting. Yeah, I'll add in, like, I've watched Peter Dunn before this spring split. Uh, he was on one of those talk shows. He just did a whole episode. Mm -hmm. I think he can definitely rub people the wrong way because he can come in and say, like, you know, he kind of sounds like he knows it all. It's like, you know, Jojo Pun's going to be the best, right? With no proof yet, except for Academy. Um, 
I would say he's kind of reminds me of like an LS kind of figure likes to say mm-hmm. like very controversial takes, but without the entertainment factor, because he's not an entertainer. Yeah. Well, all that to say, though, is like if he if him coaching and inspire being the shot caller was what was winning, why would you change that right before playoffs? Like, yep. what, what the hell's going on over there? They were like some of the most exciting and like refreshing takes on NA teams in a while. And they were able to show it consistently over two splits. That's just unusual, right? Usually if an NA team slams spring, they suck in summer or like one way or the other, right? Um, so that that's frustrating. I will say that I think Mitchell Stick has some validity to it in the sense that if that's how they were playing, you could kind of you could kind of see it in the game, right? Like a lot mm-hmm. of weird out of like place plate movement. Jojo Pion went back to spring split early games where he was just pushing forward like he would have done anyways mm-hmm. and no coordination with this jungler. And then Inspire's just like forced to do like really crap ganks, right? Which could just be like the laner just being like, oh, I want to call for a gank. And then he's like, oh my God, this is such a bronze timing for a gank. Yeah. <laughs> um, I will add in that that's probably why he was playing that way. I think it's frustrating if like, let's say the draft wasn't what you wanted, right? And you're just like picking crap. And then you're just like not playing what you want to play or the style you want to play. Then yeah, you probably will feel tilted or you won't make the calls you want to make. So even if he wasn't explicitly not the shot caller anymore, maybe the team direction had changed in terms of draft and stuff. And he was just tilted because most of Inspire's interviews are usually fairly chill. I mean, mm-hmm. to be fair, you only hear him when he's winning. But yeah. um, yeah. <laughs> so I don't know what he's like when he loses a playoff series. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. he just sounded angry. Like he's about as angry as you can get without like blowing up on stream, right? So I think EG is really throwing the ball here. And if they do it like this, they continue doing like this, they're not going to go to Worlds. I don't know, man. I, I may not be a jungler, but I feel I'd also be pretty mad if my mid laner died to every single gank and I failed a sm- an uncontested dragon smite and got it stolen by a blind Olaf axe. Yeah. I, I just, I, I think they're mid and jungle, like JoJo and Inspire. I think they just played bad. I, I, I think that's why they're salty. And I think there was a lot, a lot of underlying issues, but there were a lot of issues that happened in game which is what caused a lot of these losses. Like, yeah, sure, maybe some of the drafts weren't as good, but, like, we've seen them win with much worse drafts. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think, like, the... Um, it, it's like, it felt like their play, that the mistakes they were making were so dumb and silly that it felt like they were tilted before the series even started. I guess that's what I'm kind of hinting at. Yeah. Um, Like, something changed in their strategy to practice or their way they conduct each other as a team like in weekly meetings or whatever or like in scrims and stuff who's talking more who's telling people what to do something changed because also i mean there was a rumor that the dive actually brought up uh over a week ago or maybe it was last week that they were getting curb stomped in scrims also uh eg was losing a ton of scrims that's what they said on the dive so all of this unsubstantiated right um this is all uh like just trying to figure out the uh with what pieces we have yeah. Um, so yeah, I mean, Jojo is just pushing on like Lissandra into LeBlanc and he does get a weird gank timing from Blabber, but it's like, you're naturally pushing as Lissandra. You should be getting watched, uh, by your, you should be getting covered by your Sejuani because it's a Sejuani. It's not like a Viego, right? It's not like a Wukong that needs level six. You're Sejuani. You don't need, uh, gold. And honestly, you're more effective than the enemy jungler. So I agree with that stuff. There's like weird stuff, like just not covering your laners when they're naturally pushing in these situations where level three ganks are very obvious. Uh, missing smites, like smiting at like, what was it, 915 and getting stolen by a blind axe? That's just all uninspired. That's just that's just a tilt play right there. I don't know what yeah. that is. Uh, smiting the crab in front of the enemy for Dragon Soul. Literally crab for soul trade. That's just, yeah. I don't know, man. That's just like, that's just kind of win trading. Yeah. Um, <laughs> the last one that I'm going to say that's like, that this is very clearly a communication issue and someone is making a call but internally inspired is trying to do something else was mm. um it was this it was when he was playing sejuani and they're ganking bot um and they have ezreal yumi uh and the yumi is like ulting uh aphelios but aphelios has cleanse and flash and they actually blew renata's flash and ignite earlier so sejuani ults the um the renata while yumi is actually ulting the aphelios and you have to just it's a so clearly a play that they either didn't talk about or they disagreed on and decided to do something different things um to be fair it was very wrong for vulcan to try and ulti uh, aphelios i mean he was baiting right he had cleanse flash and mm-hmm. gale force up so 
Vulcan did go for the wrong target, but like the call, he already started his ulti, and then Sejuani ulted after for the Renata. And then they all died, because Wukong was there to counter. Blabber was right there. So it's it's like these stuff that just makes you wonder, like, what the hell are they talking about? Like, what are they saying? What are they doing? Because are they just not speaking at all? Because they just went for two different targets and then all died and lost the game. So, yeah. Yeah, I mean, well, like I said, th that would be really unfortunate because if they don't make worlds, like, it's like, dang. Like, they were good. Like, they were our first place champs in spring split. They went to MSI. Yeah. They dominated this whole split. And then all of a sudden, like, you know, internal issues just cause a quick collapse like that, you know, right when you're about to make it to Worlds. Like, I, I would feel so... I feel so bad for the players, like, you know, for everyone, actually, because it's like, this is not the time to collapse now. Like, you know, that's unfortunate. Yeah, so it's like, again, like I said, like, if one or the other is going to make it EG or TL... Uh, and that's also if TL doesn't make it like that's a fail because that was such a highly anticipated uh, roster. And I, I, for one, like am so shocked that they're fighting for their lives. Like I would have felt a little better if they were playing C9, but the fact that they got to play EG, um, you know, like, I don't know, like I'm, I'm really worried now as a fan for TL. So I want to get into Team Liquid and, and, uh, and 100 Thieves because, oh my gosh, like. First of all, I'm just so upset at Team Liquid because I just feel like they <laughs> like I don't ever like if you listen to past episodes, like I don't re really ever attribute losses or anything because of draft gaps. I mean, sometimes I think there are, but I also like to look at the play. Like, what was it in the play? How could they have made that work despite what they, you know, losing or whatever draft? But this was definitely a draft gap <laughs> this month. Like, this was just so painful to see, especially in games one and two, like not giving core their his engages like you know to me i feel like it's so simple uh you know so simple easy to you know if you need to win now go with the most 100% surefire thing you know that has been working this week and try other stuff some other time right like this was a must win series and that's why i'm upset because i felt like games 1 and 2 were just a waste uh and you know i i don't know like there were so many things that I I told you guys on Discord, you're going to have to calm me <laughs> down because yeah. I, as a Team Liquid fan, like I feel like, you know, if you're a fan, you, yeah. you're harder on them because you're just so upset when it seems like the answer is so easy. And yet they refuse to like just do the easy thing to win. So I'm going to I'm going to stop there for a second and let you guys, you know, say your thoughts on on them and the whole series. Uh, but hey, look, regardless, as an objective, you know, spectator, that was awesome. Five games, you know, like this was strong implications. Like you're going to worlds, you know what I mean? Like you avoid losers bracket. So it was, it was a hype series no matter what. I'm just really upset because my team lost. But I'll leave it at that for a second. What were your guys' thoughts on that? Yeah, I mean, I, I'm also confused. I think Liquid keeps trying to prove or at least like get that proof themselves that they can play not just engage because like clearly there's just a meta going around the world and they eventually need to catch up to it yeah but like get to worlds first do this in the semis if you really have to but like uh i am annoyed in that sense it was really hyped to see game three zillion ergot like engaged support just win the game there was like some insane double bomb placements like people were like why is abadaga like intimate i'm like have you seen those placements like where's he supposed to walk <laughs> he's mm -hmm. either supposed to keep walking to the guy attacking him or walk into the bomb it is cursed so Birk played that really well um we then see, see the hero set game. The second they picked Seraphine, I was like, we win. I, I don't give a crap what the rest of the comp is. Oh, we locked in Slain? Even better. Okay, we mm -hmm. win. Yeah. Uh, like, you saw early, or later on when Danny was, like, missing Seraphine ults. It's just extra credit. Seraphine ult doesn't, like, it's great. But, like, if you miss, you still win. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I think that character is disgusting. I think it's disgusting that 100 Thieves won twice with it. I think that this is, once again, another affirmation of 100 Thieves. Just they pick. They know what they want to pick. They pick it, and they have no shame in picking it. And honestly, at this point, they are the strongest looking team in NA. So that, that they'll get destroyed by like someone who knows how to play Draven or something. Like it's just going to be an absolutely like Draven Blitzcrank, something like one of these two characters, not probably not together. They'll just get absolutely destroyed by some yeah, Chinese or Korean they team. They banned Draven but, every game almost. Yeah, they, so, they did whatever. <laughs> almost every game. They banned it four yeah. out of five. So yeah. you're right. Uh, I will say, despite that, I'm not as upset at Team Liquid. Like if you really look at them starting in the last couple of weeks until playoffs, they were like what four and one in the last two weeks. They had a eh, game one, then won three in a row against FlyQuest, and then they went two out of five in 
probably could have won one more game if they had a brain for draft. Mm-hmm. Like, this is a good trajectory for the team. Like, I, I actually don't know. Like, obviously, I wish they were at Worlds, right? Obviously. But, like, as far as, like, upward trajectory, like, they're slowly narrowing down what they want to pick. And, like, Bipo is hitting sometimes and missing sometimes. Like, don't pick Renekton in that comp that they yeah. did in, like, game five. I'm like, what are we doing here? What? Like, they just gave Aatrox over four times, and they were like, yeah, I wonder what we're going to do. Like, I would have much rather seen a Fiora or something. I'm pretty sure Fudge actually played a great Fiora game right after he, he showed, like, yeah. why this matchup was so good. Um, so I think Liquid's on an upward trajectory. They're, like, the number three seed right now, projected. There is no other team in the bottom. Like, all the mass of people under, like, you're saying you're worried EG dropped down? I would be worried if the real EG dropped down. Right now, this is, like, crap EG. This is, like, Internal issue, geniuses. drama-filled EG. <laughs> Yeah, yeah like whatever that, that EG is, this is the EG. best EG to face, right? And EG, if EG beats yeah. us, then they beat us, right? They'll they'll actually be good for Worlds, then that's fine. But right now, Liquid looks like a, a shoe in for third. Like, it's not close. Hmm. My biggest issue with TL right now, and I mean, we were we were giving him the benefit of the doubt because, you know, Core 1 World String Enchanter meta, and I'm watching these games, and I'm just like, maybe he is just lost on supports, or lost on Enchanters. Like, hmm. I, yeah. I don't know. Like, how is he just randomly dying, recalling alone on Yumi? <laughs> yes. That was hilarious. <laughs> like, I, I don't know. Like, it's just like, he's a, he's a completely different player. And just, it, it feels like maybe he can't play Enchanters. Maybe he does actually have to play Engage. Mm, interesting. Yeah. yeah. And that, that's like, that's my biggest worry. That, he, that's he a big genuinely worry. genuinely looked like he didn't know what he was doing. Yeah, he did not. He also didn't know what he was doing on Renata. His Renata ultis were like, where, yeah. where are you going? <laughs> They're mm-hmm. so far away. <laughs> um, so maybe he is just bad on Enchanters. To be fair, neither Renata or Yumi existed when he won Worlds. So maybe he's just bad on new Enchanters. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. That's true. <laughs> um, but yeah, I mean, TL, like, they actually do look like one, like, they 100% look like the third best team. Like, and it's not even close. Like, EJ is so far next in line uh, to be fourth. Um, that, yeah, TL, I mean, it sucks that you lost, but you guys, they lost against a team that, like, brought everything out. Like, they kept, they played the Seraphine Senna comp multiple times. Um, they played, like, their best champions. They played Orin. They were forced onto Lee Sin for game five, right? So, unless 100 Thieves has, still has more stuff, like, hidden, I, it felt like TL did push 100 Thieves pretty far. And that was with being forced into engage comps. So... I mean, it's just the meta, right? I don't. I think TL has to work just so much harder to make their style work, and that sucks because if it was the meta, I think they would be much, much better. Obviously, um, so it's disappointing. I think it's just kind of like a bit of unlucky plus a bit of you know you should just learn enchanters. It's not that hard. Um, I will say I'm actually really disappointed in the game five draft in general. Like, yeah, the Renekton was like kind of whatever, right? But it's actually not bad because you're into three melees and. Even though it sucks in the Seraphine, right? At least your W breaks shields, right? So Renekton has more, at least than an Urgot, I would say, uh, in this comp. Um, the the Azir though, eh, I just feel like NA can't play Azir well. Maybe Jensen or Abadage or someone can actually pull out a good look in Azir. But I'll let you chime in. No, I was just gonna say that to yeah. interject. I actually checked that because I felt the same way. I was like, man, yeah. Azir feels real bad right now. Uh, so he got picked seven times and only won once. Yeah. Um, yet he had. He had a 94% presence, so there was a high priority on Azir, oh. but it just wasn't doing well. So I just want, you you can go on. I just wanted to interject because I was like, oh, snap, no, I, I was thinking the same thing, you know? Yeah, that's a good point then. Azir sucks. Like, you, I guess you just have to be Chovy or Faker, otherwise it's not worth it. <laughs> yeah, um, right. So, like, I I thought TL should have just gone Zilly in game five, man. Like, just do it. Like, it's your best pick. You're against three melees. You need a scaling something. Uh, and then finally, I'm going to do a little Seraphine talk, okay? Yes, they please. They actually had the comp that could have beaten a Seraphine because they picked MF. And MF, all right, Alistair, you're going to hate this. Every ADC who's listening is going to absolutely hate this. <laughs> MF had a single role, and that was to be a carrier pigeon for your special tech items. Pretty much just build Serpent's Fang and Grievous Wounds. Like, that's all MF had to do. And I guarantee you... She would have been so much more effective. Um, I I think I'm just really tilted that. Okay, first of all, Seraphine should be first pick, first ban. Yes. Bio. Every single 100%. game, every yeah. single series, no matter what, she's just so hard. Broken. Agree. Yeah, unless there's like you can actually play the comps and champs that counter it. Don't do it. Don't try to beat it with normal shit. 
because the only way to actually beat it is with some stupid degen stuff like buying early serpent's fang and like Kim punk chain sword and just doing degen stuff like that like that's all mf had to do is just apply those in an aoe to the entire team and cut the healing and shielding because seraphine doesn't have hp seraphine doesn't have armor you don't need armor pen or h like or um percent health damage or anything like that you just need to reduce the things that make her broken and that's her w her w is the most op ability maybe in the entire game yeah it, it might not even be close um so i think that that was a really missed opportunity um and then yeah if if you're not willing to play like blitzcrank into it right i think that blitzcrank hooks i was talking to alistair we watched the games live he um, hovered it yeah yeah, it's hard to land Blitzcrank grabs. It is, mm -hmm. especially on Zero Ping when players are good. But there's like so much engage that we've seen tried into Seraphine that never works because they just don't have the numbers. Blitzcrank is one of the few champions that can override that because his yeah. ulti breaks shields. You just knock him up and ulti, and you hope you have enough damage from everybody else because you just completely ruin Seraphine for a solid uh, single W rotation. Because um, we've seen Seraphine get jumped on by a bunch of people and just live, right? So... Uh, that's that's my little Seraphine rant. Honestly, TL was this close to being able to beat it, but it's just too yeah. hard to. Yeah, I agree with you, man. I saw him pick Eclipse, and I was like, okay, so he's not going to Crypt, though, so he's guaranteed to get a Serpent's Fane next, right? Yeah. And then he completes Murman. I was like, okay, he wants the 90, like 90 plus AD spike. Sure, I don't think that's right. I hope the next one's Serpent's Fane. And then it's the armor pen item. I was like, what? Yeah, right. I'm like, yeah. you went Grudge here? You went... Yeah. What was the point of picking MF? I thought the whole, like, he picked the, like, I'm so far ahead on MF, my numbers should just one-shot you, Bill, when he was not so far ahead that he could one-shot his opponents. And I was like, I was like, this is so dumb. What was the, I thought the MF pick was the Serpent's Fame pick. I was like, okay, yeah. they let Seraphine through to game five. Like, they know it's strong. Like, Hansom has a 19.5 KDA on Seraphine, 2-0. and oh. Like, he doesn't even look like he mains Seraphine. He should know <laughs> firsthand what to do against it, but he don't. He just, no. like... I'd rather have 30% armor pen against Seraphine, Senna. Like, there was armor on the other, like, laner, sure. It's just but, just like, dance and, like, tab eyes, dude. Like, yeah, like, it's not enough to really... <laughs> I think there was a Zanyas, too. But, like, it's not enough, right? Yeah. It's not enough to just be like, just break the shields and kill the squishies. Once the squishies are dead, we can focus down the drain tanks. Yeah. It was I sad. mean, <laughs> I, I, like, so I'm even going to keep on with that because I, I was very upset with Ser Seraphine... Uh, was picked four times and got four wins, right? Senna picked three times, three wins, right? Like, to me, this is where I get so upset because it wasn't even banned some of the games in that series, you know? And, you know, with to me, like, Team Liquid, like, I'm just like, just pick Seraphine. <laughs> just pick Seraphine. It's a win. Honestly, game five, yeah. when I saw the Seraphine Senna pick, I knew it was over. I already knew yeah. it was over. No matter what kind of comp they had to, to whatever, like, counter it. And to me, I just, I knew every time I saw that pick. That's why in game four, I was happy. Because I was like, oh, we got, we got, we won. We won. Yeah, like, we won. it is egregious to me that this champion still doesn't get banned sometimes and teams don't pick it. Like, honestly, I'm going to continue on this rant with also, like, I think ADCs to me, the bot lanes in general, mostly, mostly ADCs were kind of a big deal this whole weekend, like even on Thursday, because you talk about Stixay, Stixay yeah. single-handedly to me. Yes, he was getting Zeri, um, but Stixay was popping off. He was a big difference maker for Golden Guardians. You talk about Berserker, you know, he was a big uh, difference in that. I feel like the ADC matchups have been uh, crucial. And honestly, I would have liked, I don't understand. And I got to ask you guys, like, uh, to me, why wasn't bot lane... I guess prioritize a little more as far as bans because Zeri should not never be able to be made through. Zeri's uh, disgusting. <laughs> Sivir should be gone. I mean, I just feel like these these ADC should not be uh, in there. Again, Seraphine, Lulu, uh, Yumi. All of those should be banned. Like uh, to me, I feel like there Hard is to. no yeah. greater agency pick than banning your bot lane supports and and ADC. So that's that's my thought. What, what were you gonna say, Kevin? I mean, Big Dad, you just listed like five, six characters. That's the <laughs> I problem, know. Right? If, if I you know. ban three and they pick two in the first half, like what's gonna happen? I mean, I I think you just, in my personal opinion, you leave Zeri's Sivir up and then you handshake those, and then you just ban out the supports. The supports, the supports are the issue. Yeah, I think so. Like, you, you and me and Lulu are just stupid champs. So is Renata. 
And I mean, so Seraphine, yeah. Seraphine. Well, yeah, yeah, obviously Seraphine. I mean, look how bad Danny played Seraphine. Ooh. He was literally playing the champion without an ultimate and was still the most broken piece of shit in the Dude, game. Without like, an e. yeah. yeah, just never landing E. Yeah, he ulties. he bought he bought a terrible item. He bought Rylize for no reason. Mm -hmm. He had missed every single ultimate except for one during the entire game. And he's still just 1v9 in every fight because his champion's broken and healing uh, his entire team for like 400 health each on a seven second cooldown without thinking like it, yeah. it's just not it's not balanced yeah i'm gonna say i'm gonna say let me just caveat all of this by saying that as much as i hate seraphine boy i've been spamming her in solo queue i'll tell you what <laughs> okay, <laughs> I, miss you out. I have been spamming her in solo queue and i know exactly how broken she is which is why yeah, to no one's surprised. But yeah, to know if you know, hey, if I'm playing you, you know I'm playing Seraphine. Come on, Alistair. But look, like oh, I'm just saying, I'm just saying that if a dummy like me can realize the brokenness that is this champ, like I feel like this is such an easy answer. Uh, but maybe that's just my dumb brain. Yeah, but know. your thing is, right? You're a support player, you're not an AD carry player. Most yeah, AD carry oh, players true. do not want to drop the ego and play the champ. That's what I'm no, saying. Because drop nobody wants to play Ugh. stupid. God champion that never should have been released <laughs> in the first place because it's literally just the second version of Sona except power creep to all hell. Oh man. Yeah. Yeah, With a terrible voice that annoys everyone, especially the person playing them, unless you like that kind of thing. <laughs> like, <laughs> oh. like the, the, the that champion that annoys every time. Is that, that, is was that good, your Yumi or your Seraphine though? <laughs> yeah. like <laughs> or Both. Sona. Or, or so, yeah. Yeah. Or, or every or every enchanter that there is. Sona should have just stayed mute, you know. Just yeah, like with it's, it. it's, yeah. I don't know. You don't. <laughs> it, it's like I said. Like eighty, there's there was like a silent pact between eighty carry players to just not <laughs> yeah, play yeah. mages and not play Seraphine because yeah. it's not fun. Nobody likes it. And like as broken as it is, everyone admits it's super broken. Yeah, yeah. But they don't want to play one, it. Though. All it takes yeah. is one player to start doing it, and then you have to respond. It's so frustrating. It's, it's like the same thing with Ziggs. Like, Ziggs yeah. was, like, decent for a while, and, like, other champs, like, Syndromite isn't a great mid laner, but she's still, like, decent as a support. But people don't play it because there's just, like I said, there's a silent pack, and AD carries don't want to play it. I'll say, like, there's also the extra factor that, like, no one else is doing it. Like, literally, Seraphine has zero presence any other region. LCK... L uh, LPL, I watched all of it. I didn't watch all of LEC, but I'm pretty sure I never saw one in LEC either. So, like, a lot of these guys are probably just like, well, shit, all the better regions are playing, so why am I playing? But the thing that tilts me is, in this series, the two players who picked it in the regular and playoffs <laughs> had it available. One of them didn't pick it, and they picked, uh, was it Zeri or was it Sivir or something like that? And then the other one also picked it the game before, one emphatically, and we're like, let's leave it up for the other team. And I was just like, what? How can you win with this character, see like how easy it is, and still not go? I think this is our new NA Orn. I think this is our summer split Orn. If yeah. we do bring this pick to Worlds, we might get like 14 minute destroyed. Like the the infamous <laughs> SKT losing to IG game where they picked like Enchanter's bot and Draven just <laughs> ripped them a new one. Uh, that might happen to us. But at least in NA, which is all that matters right now, just pick it, and then if you need to unlearn it for worlds, it's not that hard. Just pick your regular eighty carries for worlds. Yeah. Um, I think Zeri's uber busted, but I don't think Han should have it. Oh shit! Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Damn. Yeah, I don't know why we didn't mention this, but it yeah. was like every time he picked it, it looked balanced, and every time I watched Ruler play it in LCK, I'm like, whoa. Yeah. But I okay. will say with uh with Seraphine in international play and like being able to beat it, so you can protect it with bands and stuff, but also like you could just play like a. Like, no one's actually going to play it like this, but you could just play it like a total scaredy cat. You could just, you literally could go down so much CS. Like, that's how broken this champion is. You could be so useless and far behind, and you'll just inevitably outscale, and you won't even be that useless. Like, the champ is, because uh, it's their W scaling, is, like, so much based on missing health and, like, just the rank of the actual ability rather than any items you get at all. I think that's one of the, also the most broken aspects of the ability is you could have a Seraphine with no gold, but if she has enough levels in her W, she will almost full heal the team. Like, so yeah, I mean, it, it goes to a really low cooldown. So I, I still think this is one of the few times where I could see it the other way, where we bring it to Worlds, maybe we win a couple games, and then everybody else starts picking it and taking it and shitting on us with it. <laughs> I, I could so, very, I could see that too. That that could be another yeah. very likely scenario for sure. 
Um, yeah. Okay. Well, man, I know we went on a raft on draft, but I, on a rant hey. on draft. But hey, that's yeah. that's you know that's on what I, I yeah I wanted to talk about the draft because I mentioned that earlier. That like part of that was my I, why I was so upset because I thought the drafts were so bad on TL's part. And to me, hundred thieves, I felt like their draft was good, but. You know, again, flipping to from the negative to the positive, like 100 Thieves, man, I it is, again, one of those things where I just never feel so hype about them. And I think that's part of their thing is it seems like a sentiment is that people always discount them and like underrate them. And they use that as motivation, right? Like sometimes they have lulls in the season because nothing's firing them up. But it seems like now, you know, with everybody kind of considering them not so great, they're they're coming alive. They're being consistent. They're drafting right they're winning you know properly like i the more i watch this game the more i realize or the series the more i realize how good of a team they are especially around objectives like they just play so well uh together and so to me this looks like the number one team uh at the moment and uh you know i just have nothing but good things to say i mean the the guts of a closer pick and lease in uh game five that's just a chad move and he used it like amazing like so amazing insane. highlights so good so what are your thoughts on 100 thieves <laughs> yeah i mean what are your thoughts on they're just a good team like i i got i give my props to them finally like they're they're the number one team right now i was giving them props last week i think someone else was also i was saying like if you're looking at recent power they've lost like one game and they've been well, looking better and better yeah i'm not talking about like i know we all picked them and for like to for the series which we were all right in that sense but i mean mm -hmm. like as a whole in general like even in the regular season it's always like are they up are they down you know sometimes it doesn't look like they're playing but they've been so consistent you know and they've not only finished the the split high but they're they're actually playing like i mean they're a really good team and it's just like i don't know uh, maybe not us specifically but i feel like there's just always kind of this uh discounting of them is, is kind of the feel Oh, I see. Yeah, I mean, there is discounting. I mean, we gave it, we gave them discounting until like maybe the last week or two. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was like, okay, this streak is ridiculous now. Um, I will say one thing that they're impressive about is they they decide early on what they want to do and they do it. Like they don't give two craps what the global meta is. Like if they see like some DJ and comp or pick, um, I'm not trying to like downplay them. I'm just saying like if they see something that's broken, they'll play it, and they don't, usually don't question themselves. And like it's kind of how they the old core BS uh TSM once right and almost beat them twice they were like knew what they wanted to play and tsm was like trying to do everything and <laughs> failing and tilting off of it right um i think someday has been incredible like even in the games they yes. lost like this man looked like he was trying to win every game as if it was like his life was on the line he I, his i don't know why we kept giving him atrox like every time he picked up like oh my god yeah like we was... won these games but only because we had seraphine <laughs> like if, if if i didn't have seraphine game four or Game three, they might have picked Orn, I think. So game it, three, they had I, Aatrox. Uh, oh, they had Aatrox they again? Had okay. Yeah. Honestly, it, we did beat it, I guess. But yeah. we beat it in game three, and then game four was Orn. And I, the whole time, I was like, holy cow, we barely won that. Like, Urgot was popping off, and then you just see Aatrox making, like, a the shy play in Bot River. And you're just like, okay. <laughs> um, so I think someday is the real deal right now. He is playing at the highest level of any top laner by a wide margin, like even Fudge last weekend. And I think they deserve a lot of credit for like having solid comps, really being really good on like the bread and butter. Like Silas and Ari are very flexible characters that can like roam and can like go even or clear waves depending on the matchup. And Abadage hasn't needed to show anything else. Maybe that's why he keeps banning Azir because he doesn't like playing into it. Uh, honestly, they, it was banned four out of five games and in game five it looked like nothing. So I don't really know what that's about. But 100 Thieves definitely deserves the credit. They are the number one team probably i don't know if i said going in but i at least knew that they were going to beat liquid i didn't want them to beat liquid my heart said liquid but yeah this, this was the result that was expected and honestly it was closer than i thought it would be yeah i that was close to uh, i will say that was that was a lot closer than i thought it was going to be um i predicted 100 thieves i was very quick on that expect predicting 100 thieves um i didn't actually i don't remember if i predicted five games or not i think i predicted three one but yeah i was i thought we were good i thought a uh, hundred thieves about to get reverse swept if you want to be honest yeah yeah i was hoping sucks. for that <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah uh but yeah they didn't get reverse swept and that was because when it comes to the last moment the very last stand 
uh, 100 Thieves very clearly pulled out all the stops. Okay, we know what we actually know what the real meta is. We've just yeah. hamstring yourselves. First pick Seraphine, and then pick our best best champion for our best player, Lee Sin for closer. Um, these guys are just so good mechanically. Like they are so clean, man. They're so crisp. Like yes, obviously, uh, someday in closer look the flashiest because uh, closer's Lee Sin is inhuman. It's like. Crazy. Maybe only second to Canyon. It just like it's in no counterplay. Games that I've watched. It's, it's just crazy. insane. Um, there's some counterplay, right? So I do think the one that gets highlighted, where he, uh, it's it's the soul fight. Um, yeah, he and kicked. Uh, Leeson, he, he lands this sonic wave onto Leona, and then he ward hop flashes and he kicks Hansama. Hansama. You yeah. actually see Bjergsen flashes in time to avoid it. He flashes over the wall. So if 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 Closer decided to kick. Uh, Bjergsen, he wouldn't have gotten the kickoff because he mm. flashed like, because you can flash when he's going from Q to ward hop and there's time. As soon as he's finished his ward hop and he starts his R, you're stuck, you're rooted, uh, so you can't actually escape it. But he didn't do the flash R kick, which in some scenarios is faster and some is slower. He did a ward hop. I, from his angle, I think he had to do the ward hop, otherwise it would have been too slow. Yeah, because it does actually take some time for you to click someone with R after your Q, and then move your mouse to R flash. But he went for the ward hop, and then R flash, and that is very reactable too. Especially in the position that he landed with his Q flying in, uh, next to the, the Draven, or next to the MF, Hansama. Yeah. So that one was avoidable. Um, I, and I have to say, insane by Closer to go for it, and that it worked out. Um, also, a bit of old man hands from the side of Team Liquid. Hell right? yeah, right? There could have been Azir ulti. There could have been Renekton stunning. There could have been Leona stunning. There could have yep. been Hansama not walking up that way. There could have been Hansama flashing, right? There's actually a clip someone showed on Reddit where um, Closer does almost the exact same play onto Aphelios' Berserker, or Berserker's Aphelios, and <laughs> yeah. he just Gale Forces at the perfect <laughs> timing, and he gets knocked into safety and Closer dies. Like, this stuff, like, is been in the game for, like, a decade, maybe like probably less known, but for a really long time. And I right. do think it it's it's counterable. Like you should be able to beat that. So it's risky to go. That's why I like stuff like Canyons, uh Lisa and Insect, where he does like the like the drive by Lisa and Insect by ward hopping and then taking your cue so that you can mm -hmm. bolt in midair. That's actually like a no counter play. That's like you just get rooted in midair and you get yeah. kicked into the in your own team, smiting the spell shield. Like that is just next level, like yeah, okay, that's I don't know how you beat that. But like this stuff, we've seen my players outplay it. We've especially like, unfortunately, all the Asian players can outplay these leasons. I guess they play against the most cracked leasons uh, <laughs> in Korean solo oh, yeah. all the time. So, um, it's it, it it's rough to see that TL really does have old man reflexes, but still insane from the side of. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that's that's what scares me. Again, I, I mentioned this last time. I feel like TL is the the old person team where they know macro strategy and what to do to win the games. But I feel like their, their hands are that of, of veterans of older players who really just either the, maybe the hands are there, but maybe they just fell asleep at not remembering that, Hey, Lee Sin can do that. <laughs> like Lee Sin yeah. can't do like you, you should probably have your hands ready on those spells that can stop that because you know, it's coming. Yeah. You should have or your hands, your hands your on FG. flat. Yeah, your like, flash, whatever it is, you gotta, you gotta you be see ready. See Lee flying in. It's a set amount of move speed that the Lee Sin travels. Yep. As soon as you see the Lee Sin traveling in the air, you should already exactly. have your finger on the F key. Right, so because I mean that's the thing. Like I don't, it, it could be mechanics, but it could also be just them like old man braining it and being like, yeah. oh, that's right, they have a Lee Sin who can like do that right like that yeah. that you know but again going back to that is as that's that's what worries me about team liquid is i think they are good strategists of the game but i think their hands are just not there to execute sometimes uh okay so did you guys want to talk about any of the lower bracket matches uh or did you want to go into predicting these upcoming matches totally up to you guys i mean i know I mean, we say goodbye to fly quest say goodbye to golden guardians yet, guys Oh, okay. TSM is very clearly oh. the <laughs> best team that is going to win the entire thing. That not with those the 80 carries, bracket. they aren't, bro. Just, hey, Tactical has not missed Worlds in his career. <laughs> Tactical popped off on that last game. I, ha I even pinged you, I think, Mitchell. I was like, look, they heard you. He heard you criticizing him this whole yeah, time. Did. 
And he was like, Man. he's like, forget that guy Mitchell on the All In podcast that I listen to every week. Exactly. He said, I'm about hey, to go in here and smirk. I played against Tactical in ARAM, and he curb stomped me, so he's an ARAM <laughs> god, clearly. There you go. Um, <laughs> yeah, so congrats I mean, to we, you. <laughs> I, I think we should talk about TSM, right? Like, okay. how can we not? Like, okay. What are your yeah, thoughts, I, Kevin? I agree. I agree. <laughs> yeah, what are your uh, thoughts, Kevin? I mean, for TSM, like, once again, they... They lost one game and they subbed out their support or their AD carry. Like, yeah. I was like, what? I was like, what happened? <laughs> he won game one, was fine. Lost the game and I was like, what? Tacticals coming in? We haven't seen him in weeks, guys. Like, I don't know. I almost forgot he was on the roster. When he subbed, I was like, what? I know. I was like, that? what? <laughs> yeah. And then he went, uh, let me just put it this way. Remember how Tactical was like 11 and 0 in his last Zaya game and yeah. like uh, maybe like six assists or something? He ended. Uh, with a 3.9 KDA. You want to know why? Because oh, the game he they subbed him in, and mind you, they kept him afterward. He went one and seven on Draven. Oh, and they lost God. in like 26 minutes. Okay, good so time. good on him. <laughs> he still played well afterward, which is kind of, frankly, is very impressive considering how terrible that game was on Draven. To be fair, his support was misplaying every situation. His jungler was zero. Yeah. Oh my gosh! Yes, yeah. that was but, the whole team exploded. Got... I'm not just saying it was him. <laughs> I'm just, it is weird Here's to me by. that Tactical was subbed in after one loss. I, I really don't like that TSM has no faith in their, their players. They'll say, we believe in instinct. We'll believe in soul. And then after the first, like, pebble hits them, they're like, ah, this guy's dead to me. I don't know who you are. I'm buying Chime. I'm putting in Tactical, who's been on the bench for seven weeks or something. So I hate that. However, I mean, props to them. I think they played the best. This is They're like the C9. They played the best they've played all season, like, there were some like sparks of life at the end when they got chime back, uh, chime a couple weeks into the end of the split. But like, this looked good enough. Uh, FlyQuest was not playing at maximum power, sure. Um, actually, they weren't even playing at like 70% power. I'm, I'm gonna say like there's like 50% of the FlyQuest we expected in the series. But then TSM was enough, right? You just have to show, you have to beat the enemy that's put in front of you that day. And I guess TSM did it and they had to use Zyra Khan to do it. Like, they were not. Like, I don't know if Tactical can play anybody else in the meta. He played an okay server, but, like, yeah, his Zeri was, like, a nightmare. He was, like, doing the flash ult thinking he was AP Zeri when he was playing on uh, the, as a starter. So I, I'm concerned about this team. I don't think they can really rely on Tactical to win five games against an actual team that shows up. Wow. Um, but Imagine being a Tactical hater, man. I, I don't think... <laughs> you, Mitchell. Did. You don't want to talk. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, I'll be honest, I don't think TSM even beats EG, assuming EG plays as, plays like they did this weekend. Oh, man, that's, yeah. Yeah. That's not, that's not a very hot take, but yeah. I know it's not. I, yeah. like, bro, if there is one bot lane that lanes as bad as Danny, it's TSM's bot lane. Yeah. Yeah. Hard to agree. But do you not think that, Kevin, do you not think that maybe that was part of the TSM strategy was to split time with Tactical? I mean, like, do you think that was a reaction? Like, do you think it was because they lost, like, a reactionary thing? I think they prepped him for playoffs, but was that, like, their overall strategy throughout the split? Hell no. He has not gotten, he's gotten no stage time with Chime, his support. Right. <laughs> like, yeah, sure, they probably yeah. played a couple of scrims, right? But ever since Chime's been introduced, they've stuck with Instinct. They even subbed out Soul for, um, Solo. Solo, Solo but, like, yeah. but they did not ever use tactical night but do you once, think right? do you think maybe and i don't know this about i'm just again going on speculation but do you think it's because like is tactical known to be a draven player because maybe they were like hey we need a draven we're gonna handshake the server no <laughs> alistair that. shaking his head no I okay re no <laughs> i remember in the his history of him being a liquid player he probably played like once or twice okay like, so not really mm, and, he's like, a zaya player yeah he's okay. a zaya lucian player that's what tactical is really good at zaya yeah, and sure. lucian Okay. Yeah, I, I was just wondering, you know, maybe maybe it could have been a strategy like, I, hey, we I need will a say Draven. For TSM, once again, if Sola does not get a starting team next year, like this this world is just not fair. It's not yeah. built fairly. Oh yeah, yeah. I this have guy... a thing about Solo though. He can okay. only yeah, play five ahead. champions. He is of the same <laughs> yeah. generation as like Summit, Someday. Yes, uh, you're right. Uh, like there's all these players that like they, okay, so Someday is really branched out, right? Yeah. And Summit has a little bit in LPL, but he can only play. Renekton, Orn, Aatrox, and like uh, Nar, Nar, and like one other champion maybe. Like for him, it's like set you can play. But then for other champ, for other players, it's just Jace, right? They add that extra one, and then it's just that same five. Oh, Alfari is just right up there too, right? They play the same mm -hmm, mm -hmm. five freaking champions. I think that's his really problem because 
he only he played four games of NAR until he until the Orn wasn't banned and then he played Orn. And I just feel like that's that's just like his identity. That's what his entire identity was on on FlyQuest. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I on think for I, I think the issue is that he's toxic, but that that could be too. I mean, I still think that when you do give him those five champions, I mean, he looks pretty damn good, right? Like he was he was doing well on the NAR and the Orn. I just think it's funny that there's just this era of like five or six different top layers that you see across the world that all fall, fall into this little bucket. They play Renekton, Aatrox, Orn, <laughs> and like Gnar every game. And maybe a JT here and there, right? Like, it's so funny. It's so random. <laughs> it's like some cartel pushing an agenda of these characters and they they sign a blood pack where they can only pick these characters. Yeah, right? And if they it's pick so anything weird. else, they just get, they play like crap. I mean, They're... yes, I, I totally agree. There's probably some limitations to his play, but like Gamsu, Fake God, like these people were getting starting spots w- yeah. over Solo. And Solo yeah. was literally just sitting there waiting for week five it, or week six to sub onto TSM. Yeah, yeah. Like, there's I no way that he's not worth getting to playoffs at least, right? Like, toxic yeah. or not. And maybe that's why they just sign him after, like, everything's gone to shit. There's nothing yeah. else to lose. <laughs> uh, last, last, last option. Yeah, <laughs> it's pretty much. Solo. There's, like, a button that's, like, called yeah. Solo. <laughs> the last yeah. button, the big red button, <laughs> Solo. <laughs> Here yeah, it is. But, uh, otherwise, about like I mean, I'm memeing, right? <laughs> TSM obviously I think has zero chance to actually make it to Worlds or make it to a, a deep run in playoffs. Their drafting prio is super whack, right? Like, there's just, I don't know how you're supposed to win against a real team with when you play Nar or in every game and you don't pr- prioritize Seraphine when one of your 80 carries can't even play Zeri or right? Like, Tactical doesn't even play Zeri. <laughs> like, <laughs> we didn't see him and it was up. Um, so yeah, I mean, it, it's right. a bit of a meme. But, so uh, how funny would it be if they made it to Worlds? <laughs> dude, that would be nuts. Um, that would just break the internet. The return of TSM League Dead. <laughs> I know, right? I'm, hey, I'm Over just returning dude. back to my ship. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> How tragic would it be for Bjergsen, dude? He leaves TSM oh, and they my. make it to Worlds over him. Actual career suicide. <laughs> that would be uh, extremely funny, but also I'd feel really bad for Bjergsen. I would feel so but, uh, depressed, and uh, yeah. I would just be laughing. It was just, I know, that's you know, the thing. I'd, that both at the same time, like, crying <laughs> yeah. and laughing at the same time. Like, what the heck? Like, what is happening? Like, yeah. this is crazy. Uh, but, okay, so we've kind of, I guess, said that TSM is probably not going to go much further. Uh, is, C- the, yeah. Yeah, is CLG gonna go much further uh than where they are and i'm just gonna put out there and i'm not gonna spend too much time on it but after watching last week i just don't think this team is is at that caliber yet i think this is easily gonna be a tl win um but yeah i don't think clg is gonna make it much further i don't, I don't think so either and, and largely um, i'm gonna be honest it's largely because they're playing against tl like <laughs> i don't I don't think that level of aggro that they want to play and like is their bread and butter is going to get anywhere against Liquid. Yeah. I think they showed a really respectable attempt right in their game against C9. They like really pushed them, um, but you could tell like they were starting to lose steam as they were playing that series. I think that they they're just not good enough individually. Yeah. They, there's some incredible coaching to make them even play at that level, honestly. But like what where you there's so little there's so much less that they can milk out of their players between last week and this week. While Liquid's like every every series, every time they like do something super dumb, you're just like, wow, we could be this much better if we just like picked this and stopped picking this, right? Like there's no simple solution for CLG. So can they win? Yeah, of course. Is it favorite? No, it's like 25% chance is what I would give them. And like I, I wouldn't be surprised if betting odds were like close to that too like 2.5 to 3 ish 1 to uh 1.4 to like 2.5 or something like that mm-hmm. so uh, i think liquid should win i don't think it should be that close the win that clg gets will look like a stomp but it won't like it'll be like the fly quest series like they can get one but that's that's i think it's 3-1 okay 3-1 tl well wow. nice I don't know what to think because I feel like a lot of the teams have been very inconsistent. I don't think there's been one team who's looked who looked good last week and this week. I think every team has looked either good one week, good week one, and bad week two, or bad week one and good week two. And I think CLG this past week did not look as good as they looked in week one. To be fair, we were talking about how Cloud9 looked really bad in week one, looked really good in week two. So it's really hard to tell because obviously like you can't do the the math that doesn't ever work because you can't just say like oh yeah this team beat this team which you know like that that doesn't work anyways i'm actually gonna say five games i'm still gonna lean towards tl just because 
the consistency factor. I don't know what I don't know what level of each team is going to show up. Maybe CLG just comes up and blasts them. Maybe TL gets up and blasts them. Maybe both of them look absolutely terrible and one team just gets Seraphine. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. It is really hard to tell. Like CLG is definitely one of the like just hardest to predict teams. Um cuz like they were they were bang for bang against C9 and then honestly the series against Golden Guardians looked like the same series almost. Like Golden <laughs> Guardians could have been C9 like in that same it was super yeah. weird. Um I don't think uh CLG I don't think Seraphine's going to be a thing at all cuz if there is ever a team that Seraphine gets banned against every team it is CLG. CLG actually gets banned Seraphine banned against them all the time. Which I think is ridiculous and hilarious that like CLG's been on the Seraphine hype train since the beginning of summer yeah. split. And now other teams are realizing it's OP. I mean, come on, man. But <laughs> like, yeah. So I'm going Team Lel, TL. Like, I think if I, I mean, there's no way to predict how consistent the teams are, how they're gonna play. So I'm gonna say if TL plays like how they did this weekend, and CLG plays like how they did this weekend, and they, it's just a TL, it's just a TL super favorite. It's like TL three one three zero. Um, CLG needs a revival on the level of cloud nines to yeah. have a chance to beat C, uh, TL and barring that, I don't think there's a way. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I have to agree. CLG is a fun team to watch because I think they just have one speed, you know what I mean? And <laughs> yeah. that one speed is going to, I honestly don't mind it because it's almost like limit testing every time. And I'm hoping that through their, the times it doesn't work, that they're learning those limits. Like, Oh, okay. We, this is why we went too far this time or like, you know, or whatever. Like we try to push too much or go over aggressive here. Whereas, uh, you know, they can take that and actually know their limits. Uh, so I don't mind them pushing that. Uh, but I think at that same sense, because they're, they're learning that it is going to be 50, 50 and very hard to tell because when it does work, it's going to be very advantageous for them. And when it doesn't work, it's going to look really, really bad. Uh, I think TL will be smart enough to know that they are not going to mess around with enchanter supports for a core. I think they will know like, Hey, look, let's just not play around anymore. Like we just need to win. We just need to get to the next series and move on and get to worlds. And then we'll start messing around and stuff. So I don't expect, and if I do, I'm going to go crazy, but I don't expect them <laughs> to pick uh, enchanters unless it's, it's Seraphine for Han Sama, right. And Nautilus yeah. or something like that. So I hope I don't see that. I hope TL recognizes that. Okay. Just get down to business. Let's let's worry about trying new stuff other uh, later on. Let's just make this first. But it seems like we're in the consensus of TL and EG making it. So obviously it'll probably be TL EG. And we did allude to you know most. I think a couple of you guys were saying that right now TL is the third best team. Do you think Team Liquid no, then yeah. beats EG uh, in what we're expecting to be the the match the matchup TL versus EG? Uh, what my, team shows up? Yeah, what team shows up? I mean, for me, if the internal issues are true, then my, my I do feel really good about TL. So I'm gonna I'm gonna say TL. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, if you can know what team shows up on the day, you could predict almost every series. No, I, I know, made, but right? like you know what I mean, though, right? Like, yeah, my yeah, point so... is like it's just been so inconsistent. Same issue, like yeah. we predicting TL CLG. Right. Like with right. TL CLG, like I think obviously Core is a better player than Poom. But if they're both playing enchanters, I think that's the only way that Poom like wow. outclasses yeah. Core JJ. <laughs> huh? yeah. Like if it's you bad, actually bad. Like, look at it, I think the top matchup is slightly Whippo favored. I think Jungle is definitely Santorin favored. Mid, I honestly might lean towards Palafox, assuming he like actually shows up because like he's had like bad games. He's also had one v nine plays or one v nine games. Palafox but is I'd... a playmaker. Yeah, yeah. and then. Bots, honestly, kind of even, I feel like, assuming enchanters are played. So it's like, that, that's why I think it's going to be closer. But anyways, I mean, for EGTL, it's, I would lean towards EG, but mm. I don't know. Okay. I think it's pretty easy to say. If we don't know which team's going to show up, I'm going to tell you, whatever I saw last week was good enough. That, like, that's yeah, what I expect to see, right? So yeah. in my mind, I'm going mm. to bet on the chances being that Liquid will stay even, or even if they're slightly worse, they're still above what eg should right so eg needs to make a pretty big leap and like gain faith back in their systems or whatever they're mm -hmm. using to or like if i don't see like pure done on stage and inspire like has a, a frown on his face we win 
easy. So yeah. I think it's going yeah. to be. Let's look for that like, for real. Let's look for that for real and call it out right. in Discord if that if, happens. If yeah. you see it, screenshot it and send it to the Oh, yeah. Chat. Yep. Yeah, okay. If you don't okay. see it, then it's going to be a close game. You know? but okay. Yeah. It's going to be a 3 1. It's yeah. going to be EG like showing glimpses of like being a good team, right? Because they've been so good for so long. But like, frankly, I don't think there was enough time. Like, they were. The sec they were the last match, right? They were yesterday's match on Sunday, yeah. and so they only have like five ish days plus or minus one, mm -hmm. right? No, to to prepare, like, is that enough time to like get over all the bitter fans and the fact that you are one series away from Worlds in NA? Uh, I don't, yeah, like Liquid, it was on a much higher note. They left on a much higher note. They didn't get Giga stomped. Like mm -hmm. it was a three one, but it was not a very nice feeling three one. Yeah, yeah. So what I would also say is like e EG is playing on Friday against TSM. That's gonna be a pretty solid pick me up, I think. Or it could be very Imagine detrimental. They lose it. If it's oh close though, I'm pretty yeah, sure it's close. Though, but you're I, right. You're right. I, I would expect EG to blast TSM. So I think that would be a solid pick me up and a solid like mental reset. However, mm. if it goes poorly and it maybe goes five games, then we're having a very different conversation. No, yeah, not so yeah, much. Don't, <laughs> hey, don't doubt my boy TSM tactical, all right? He's gonna smurf. <laughs> our, our wrath will be swift we'll smurf on all you peasants i don't remember what it was but how funny would it be i mean i would hate the timeline but i would be laughing to my grave if if tsm beats eg i would just that just sounds so freaking hilarious that is and if it, the worst timeline and if it's tactical <laughs> that that carries them like you're gonna have to I'm eat down, your words the you're gonna have to eat your words give it to me <laughs> give it to him <laughs> yeah i will have it's to tag him no, yeah i don't want to see it i don't it's want to hear it the worst, Wait, most terrible if, first timeline. If TSM goes to Worlds, does that mean Fake God goes to Worlds? Wait, because he gave Tactical the Fake God award. Oh my God, that would be amazing. It's the reverse like Summit. It's like do you be the most terrible thing in <laughs> yeah, regular season and then go to Worlds and playoffs. Oh <laughs> gosh, I love it. I love Let's this. Let's go, man. yo, Fake God's a legend. What? Maybe Dignitas just had to go to Worlds, and then they would win the, the championship, It also right? means that Top 8 will always be playoffs, because they will always just point to this one fluke, and they'd be exactly. like, Look, yeah, you got to give them a chance. It. That's right. It doesn't matter. They were four wins down. <laughs> what about you, Mitchell? It doesn't, it doesn't matter. In one series, they won half of the games. They won out of the entire split. <laughs> hey, I mean, yeah, we'll see. Um, yeah, I, I mean, all right. So here's my guess, okay? This is what's going to happen with EG. Uh he makes inspired makes the interview he he everybody makes the same conclusions maybe on their team about what happened in the game right their calls were bad and their drafts were bad in these specific instances right i do think the sejuani flex early rotation that eg kept going for i mean that's what genji just did in their finals to be to 3 ot1 right so they they just they know that it's good but they didn't execute it well because they just didn't play stuff that's good with Sejuani and they just didn't play Sejuani like when Inspired was on Sejuani he didn't gank until like level 7 or something that's you're not playing Sejuani right like your whole kit is designed to kill people at level 3 because you just stun people and you have a knockback and a dash like that you're supposed to gank at level 3 and um so I think they're going to change that up they're not going to get overindulge in the stupid um Sejuani flex and they're going to maybe learn from their stakes and we're going to hope, they're going to hope that, hey, maybe we just go back to Inspired micromanaging all of us and we just say, T -t take us away, <laughs> right. Inspired. Just let's go to Worlds and then we'll figure the rest out later. Because exactly. I don't think, right, when you get to international competition and Inspired is telling you what to do every time, all the time, it's just not good enough. It doesn't work, right? Because there's five Inspireds on the enemy team and you have one. So we'll see. I do think that if EG looks... If they look like anything they looked like in regular season, I think it's a five game against TL and it's really close at their current yeah. form. But obviously EG at their current form, they get 3-0 stomped by TL. So I don't know. I think I'm going to go EG deserves one more chance for me and my faith. They had one bad series in a year of good stuff. And I heard Inspired, their main player, talk about those issues already. 10 20 minutes after the game happens so i'm gonna give them the benefit of the doubt i think eg makes it yeah yeah i mean again like i said like for either team if they don't make it it's a huge disappointment a disappointment right. because like expectations are high for both of these teams like honestly 
C9 not making it would have been kind of understandable. Like, you're like, okay, well, they didn't really get their... Like, they're going to be good for sure. But the fact that they upset EG right now and... I don't want to say stole a spot because they do deserve it, but they technically stole a spot because I don't think anybody before this weekend was really thinking C9 would, Bro, would probably make they it. They lost to a first-time support. Literally, Vulcan was Zven's yeah. support, man. <laughs> like, yeah. how harder can you get styled on? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> pretty <it's>, rough, man. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty crazy. So, yeah. okay, so that that's interesting. So now I guess, you know, the last one is 100 Thieves for C9. Like, you know, given what we saw this past weekend, just high levels of play from both teams... Um, you know, if we, if both teams come like they did, you know, last weekend, you know, or not even that, but what do you guys think about that matchup? Like, what what are your predictions? I, I still have to go with hundred thieves just cause I think when you're playing at a high level for so long, I feel like they are in a rhythm, like they are kind of in a, in a good mentality. They've been doing this, right? It, it, they're, they're kind of like at that point again, this is playoff hundred thieves. They've already been clicking for so long. They are a well-oiled machine, and I didn't mention this earlier, but I gotta give. I have to think that part of why they're so successful for and for this long and this consistently is because they've stayed with their core for so long. You know, like so many teams switch players so quickly that I think that I love that Hundred Thieves has kind of broken that norm, have stayed with at least the core for several years now. Like it's it's crazy. And I think that, look, they're still good. They know how to play with each other. And for all those chemistry reasons, like, they know it's crunch time. Like, they know what it is to be champions. Like, I really favor them. So I'm going to go 100 Thieves. I think it will probably be C uh, five games if C9 comes like they did last time. But I'm going 100 Thieves. Um, I think it's 3 100 Thieves. I think the 100 Thieves had a way better warm-up game. Like, they played against mm, a real yeah. team, got pushed really hard, and, like, could really refine themselves against a team that like was trying to counter pick them was trying to counter strat them was really trying to push them i i don't necessarily even think i'm convinced that c9 is really firing on all cylinders like that clg game like did just happen a couple of days beforehand from there and they struggled and did they beat eg yes was it because eg was playing poorly i also think yes i think eg collapsed i think that was just a very easy walkover game so not, I mean, you just have to be whoever the heck's put in front of you. But frankly, 100 Thieves is playing on another level. And like C9 in my head is still not necessarily like the number two team in the region just because they beat a team that just completely did not show up. So, yeah, a lot of C9 hate, honestly. I, I just think huh? that it's so easy to get <laughs> hyped. But like you watch the series, you're just like, okay. Yeah, what is yeah. EG doing? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What is EG doing is what I was thinking most of the time instead of what, and like, Frankly, most of the time, that's what I'm saying about 100 Thieves, right? So, like, it kind of is, like, almost poetic that I'm saying this about their opponent in this case. Because, like, they did show a lot. And they showed, like, a lot of um, stability versus, like, I don't know. I mean, C9 just maybe looked better, but I don't know if it was by that much. It just looked like EG was free kills. Like, Danny E4 was nothing about C9's prep, okay? Yeah. In fact, getting solo kill was just with the same old, right? They didn't prep yeah. anything, it looked like. Danny so, flashed to a wall, saying. man. I can't believe yeah. it. He just flashed Dude. right in place. I, was like, I, mean, I, don't know where, I don't know where he's flashing to anyways. He's no. flashed out. Even he's if he succeeded the flash, he just would have wasted DPS. He wouldn't have died as fast, but like he would have just been sitting there out of the fight. I was like, what? No, what was I watching? Danny. It just looks so bad. <laughs> yeah, so I mean, I, I'm with Kevin. I'm going I'm gonna say three one hundred thieves. I mean I think Cloud Nine's playing a lot better, but I think Hundred Thieves is much more consistent. I think Cloud Nine looked really good because the team they're playing against, their two best players weren't even there. I mean, there were so many games that were just one off of EG making like boneheaded mistakes for no reason. They were forced into an Elder Dragon fight when the only only reason the Elder Dragon spawned was because Inspired couldn't smite not smite something uncontested. <laughs> blind right? axe, baby. Like blind blind axe steals it as he's just like clearing it by himself. So he like and that forces an elder fight that loses the game. Granted, they were already behind. Or Danny's just like positioning like an idiot for some reason. And I, I don't know. It's for some reason EG is banning three AD carries and nothing else. Like I, I just think Cloud Nine didn't necessarily look good because Cloud Nine looked good. I think they they looked good a lot because partially, very largely because EG just looked bad. <laughs> yeah. Yep. It's up to me, right? The last prediction. Yeah. So, 
You guys are all right. He's saying C9. I can no, tell. I'm he's, not about, saying C9. he's about you guys to say are all it. Correct. It's a hundred thieves. He's gonna lose. <laughs> ah, I do it. Yeah. I do it. No, I think it's it Cloud Nine because. Honestly, I just believe in the dream. I just believe in the uh, the idea that they're just. I I thought when I saw this roster, they're gonna win the split. So uh, true. I think but C9's, Mitchell, are you going yeah. right now with your heart or with your head? Yeah, yeah. Because it's, no, no, it no, sounds no. Logic, like it's going with your heart. Logic dictates that hundred thieves definitely wins. <laughs> like, <laughs> it's just, okay. They're so clearly the better player in terms of draft. Also, like right, right. I think that C9 can pull a lot of weird stuff with draft. Like. I actually don't know how Zillion versus Seraphine really matches up. I imagine still goes Seraphine, but Zillion is still a stupidly broken champion. And I've seen Jensen play Nivea, also a stupidly broken champion, counters a lot of stuff that's going on in the meta right now. I There's just stuff that I don't know about this series that could happen, right? Honestly, Fudge has all the correct picks that I'm looking for to actually beat someday. It's Fiora, it's Camille, it's like also tanks, it's also, you know, I mean... Fudge can just play so much stuff, right? But Fiora and Camille are the big ones. Like, they can... That really neuters someday's champion pool unless... Because he... Unless he can bring out the other champions that beat those champions. Like, Elrelia or something, right? Or Jax. So, um... I, I think it's going to be a really contentious series because all the picks really lead me to thinking that, hey, these guys are both going to be blow for blow in the draft and we're not going to come out saying this is one good draft versus a bad draft. It's going to be very even drafts, I expecting. And the play, I mean... Both teams showed such crazy high-level mechanics that mm -hmm. they were just consistently good, and they're hitting all of their, like, the combos that, like, Jensen was doing and the combos that Fudge was doing on LeBlanc and Fiora and Camille were, like, those are just perf almost perfect combos. Like, you can nitpick here and there little bits, but they almost executed them, like, how I see the perfect play executed. And you saw the same thing on uh, 100 Thieves. Someday, Closer, Abadage even... Like, they're just executing their champion's combos, like, so crisply. So, I think it's really hard. And because it's so even for me, I think, that I'm just going to go with Cloud9 because I said they go were for it, man. before the split even started. So, <laughs> um, go with your heart. Cloud9, I have faith. In go with your heart, my friend. I dig yeah. it. I'm totally with it. All right, uh, final thoughts time. Is there any final thoughts that you guys want to throw in there? Uh, all right, Kevin, he went up fast. Oh, okay, well, you're ready to say I something. Mean, What's it's up? Not, it's not hard for me to say, dude. Are we ever going to have a damn good LCK final? I swear to God. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I stay yeah. up to watch that shit every uh, time. And every time it's like a 3-0, 3-1 speed run. This time it was even the same damn teams from the last one. And it was just one uh, side in the other direction. It's so I hate LCK's format. Like, I think the teams are yeah. great. I think that there's so many good teams there. But every time it's like, we have three best of fives or four best of fives in all of playoffs, and we just get a crap final. Like, yeah. I, I'm i just so annoyed. He's mad. Like, there's Guys, actually, they mad. should be, they should be, by all rights, they should have a very similar caliber to LPL, at least in the top bracket. And every time I just get three best of fives and just, it's just all garbage or five best of fives. And it's all shit uh, at the end. I, I'm, I can't believe it. I can't believe it was another stop. Okay, that's all I gotta say. Hey, no, that feel that hey, much. It looked like that was on your chest for a while, so I'm glad that you got that off there, Kevin. It's been like years, <laughs> literally. Yeah. What was the last yeah. good finals right. in LCK? I, I I don't know. There hasn't been a lot. I mean, it's always funny. I think when I remember back in the day, it would always be some new team that would win regular season and be in the final boss. And then Faker would come in as a lower seed and just win. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. those were good yeah. times. Good those times. were good times. What was it Longju? It was Griffin. It was um, I think KT did one. Like there's just all these times where Faker just comes mm -hmm. up random. Like all right, we're just we're just gonna win the finals. <laughs> yeah, um, you, we, you're but, not gonna win it. Yeah, I, I do think that this Genji roster though. I mean, they 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 showed the Sejuani flex that every team has kind of just always thought about, but they actually finally did it. Um, and then freaking Morgana jungle, man. I that know, is right? Something that is unbelievable that I forgot existed. I forgot. And then Peanuts uh, played it once in the regular season or something, and I didn't really think about it too much. But then I heard the casters talking about it. I heard Rush. Hey, nice to see him. He was talking about it. Yeah. And I was just like, holy cap. Like, I think Morgana jungle might actually just be such a good meta pick right now. It's so good into a lot of the junglers. I think it can have a rough time in late game against the Wukong. But against Trundle, against Poppy, against Vi, against all this stuff, against anything that counters enchanters, like like Nautilus or like Camille or Silas and stuff, you can really mess up with a Morgana in the jungle. 
And um, I remember back, what was it, last year MSI, and I had to play her because she was, like, broken as hell. The champ is so uninteractive, man. Like, you just apply Leandri's, you just hold your root, you can never get engaged on, and if they do single target someone, you got Black Shield. It's like, wow. This is some crazy uh, uninteractive gameplay. So I, I hope maybe we pick it up. I would love yeah. to see us pick up Morgana Jungle because it's really easy to play. It's, like, stupidly easy. Her clears are literally as complicated as stand in the right place, and it does itself. So yep. I, I would love to see some more Morgana. Yeah, that was hype to see. Yeah, it is pretty interesting. And, you know, we have seen it before. So, again, yeah. kind of one of those those champs that kind of gets put right back into the cycle because of whatever reason, and that makes it good. Uh, any other final thoughts? You guys uh, pretty much settled? No? Good? All right. Well, that's going to do it, man. We we caught up on all that action. It was a lot, and I'm excited, and I just hope it never ends. So hopefully we have some good banger series Sorry, uh, I got one last up. thing. I got there one last thing. Sorry, there sorry. it is. I knew he was going to uh, I knew it. Yeah, <laughs> just yeah, kidding. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, let's go, let's go. Let's uh, go. TSM's <laughs> winning. Uh, LCS and TSM's winning Worlds. Tactical MVP. Finals MVP at Worlds. Thank you, oh everybody. Oh, my gosh. From, from number one critic <laughs> to number one fanboy, Mitchell. <laughs> Tactical train. It's not like a, meme, a betting I website, so we can yeah. actually keep track of our bets and see where we spend our money. I know, like, yes, I this is why. This. this is why. Yeah, we always talk about it, and never follow through, but we really do need to make like whenever some of one of us, all of us, make like crazy bold predictions like that. We have to put something at stake. It's just not fair. We can't just throw out things and there's no repercussions. All right, all right. If, T if TSM Tactical does not win worlds, I will admit that i was just memeing and not capping but if he does win worlds i'm gonna say i called it from the beginning <laughs> that's all i got lose lose situation it's, just a meme. it's a meme all right well yeah that's gonna do it thank you guys for providing all your wise insights kevin mitchell and alistair and even your memes so thank you for that <laughs> but uh until next time enjoy your climb on the rift try not to be too toxic and we'll see you all on the next episode peace